25-year-old Jennifer Prudencio crying in court as prosecutors say she knew her three-year-old son Yael was sick in the week leading up to his death, but made a decision to spend Saturday night out drinking. Hey special family, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Autism Mom and on this channel we talk about autism and everything in between. Today we're doing another fair use reaction video. Let's take a look at the video. 25-year-old Jennifer Prudencio crying in court as prosecutors say she knew her three-year-old son Yael was sick in the week leading up to his death, but made a decision to spend Saturday night out drinking. The defendant went out that night to a bar in Revere where she drank alcohol for a number of hours and then she slept at a friend's home, a boyfriend's home in Somerville. The family lived in this Chelsea apartment building with a memorial to the little boy, who prosecutors say had a seizure disorder, hemophilia, and had been vomiting blood in the days before he died. I remember the little boy because he was so cute, and I always had contact with all the keys, and I always say, hi. But on this night in apartment 311, prosecutors say Yael was pale, had an untreated head injury from a fall, and was left in the care of his seven and eight-year-old siblings overnight. Prudencio allegedly admitted to police one of the children reached out to her that night. The defendant also admitted that during the night she received a video and text from her eight-year-old son communicating concerns for the child, the alleged victim's well-being and that despite that, she chose to stay out all night. Not arriving home, they say, until 10 o'clock in the morning to find Yael had died. What of an unresponsive three-year-old. It's very sad because uh, he's only three years old. I only hear a woman crying, and when I saw for the window, I saw the ambulance. As Prudencio looked to her family in court, her attorney argued for lower bail, saying she's been cooperative. Is there anything you'd like to say? Her family rushed from the courthouse without commenting. But I understand that parents want a break. They want a night out. But you put another adult to watch your kids, not a seven and an eight-year-old. And on top of that, you have a child who has seizure, an unattended head wound, has hemophilia, and, and, and you spend the night out knowing you left them with a seven and an eight-year-old? You spend the night out, the person you call your boyfriend should be ashamed of himself too, knowing that you have minors at home, if he knew. If he didn't know, I take that back. But that he let you spend the night knowing you have kids at home. That's crazy. You deserve everything you get. Because who leaves their child home with a 7 and an 8 year old? And a child who suffers from seizure, and you get a text, you straight up ignore the text, get drunk, and even spend the night out. Now, let the rest of your days be suffer, just like that child suffered. Let's go to the comment section. First commenter says, some people shouldn't be parents. Rest in peace, baby boy. She is some people. Next commenter, imagine the trauma the older siblings experience. Poor babies. God be with them. Rest in peace. Yeah, because the seven and the eight-year-old had to sit there and watch their sibling die and they couldn't do nothing to help. And they call you, they text you, you're not responding. And then you want to come home and holler? It's too late to holler now. Oh, you sober now? Next commenter. As a single mom, I'm not leaving my baby, especially if he's been sick and not in care of another child. She deserves no mercy. I agree. Next commenter. My son is 21 and told me last night he didn't feel good. Best believe mommy came to the rescue. Med, soup, movies, and lots of care. That's what real moms do. Maybe you need to take a page out of this book. Next commenter. Oh my God, this is so sad. I'll never understand how some people put their boyfriend, girlfriends before their kids. First, just for a good time. Yeah, she did. Next commenter, there's too many stories of babies because of their parents. So sad, definitely. 
Next commenter, why didn't those relatives show up for the kids like they did that woman shaking my head? Why didn't she just ask for help with the kids? Yeah, because if all y'all packed in court to support her, where was this support when she needed a babysitter? Mm hmm? Next commenter, I can't imagine the trauma of those siblings watching his baby brother die, unable to do anything to help. They might be traumatized for life. They might need therapy to get over their hump. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this story. And do you also feel like I do that this is happening way too much? Let me know and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.